Hey guys, Ray at 321 Airsoft, and today we're going to do a uh, internal review of the King Arms M4A1. And uh, I've already gone to the lengths of taking this thing apart. Um, that way we would save time. But what we're going to talk about is the internal components and how this gun is built. And um, let's talk about one of the first things that we noticed when we took this gearbox out of the gun uh, is that uh, my techs and I went through here and we actually uh, tried to move the gears laterally to test the shimming and you have almost zero lateral movement on these gears and this is probably hands down. Now I can get a second opinion on this Paul. Is this not one of the better shim jobs you've seen on a stock gun? Well as far as we can tell this is by far the best stock shim job. Heck, this is a shim job. Somebody went to the length of actually shimming this gearbox. Um, um, that's that is like one of the best things that we've seen so far. The um, the only thing that we didn't like when we were disassembling this was that King Arms did not provide any sort of quick disconnect for the uh, uh, forward wired gearbox, and as a result. I've switched to Dean's and I have to desolder this each time um, to get the gearbox out of the receiver. Now um, I can probably put a quick disconnect in here and make life a little bit easier but uh, I just desolder it when I have to. So um, the zinc alloy gearbox shell, uh, we're not a fan, uh, although it, it tends to hold up it's pretty solid. We fired tens of thousands of rounds through this gun, like tens of thousands, like maybe 50,000 plus, um, with an 11.1 lithium polymer battery, not using a stock motor, but actually using an SHS high torque motor. So we've actually beefed this gun up, the rate of fire and the trigger response, by putting a high torque motor in there. And uh, we have not done any or seen any cracking or damage to the uh, gearbox shell. And the King Arms does not round out the uh, cylinder windows, but they do reinforce the front end. Um, you could still crack these off even though they are reinforced. So we're going to take measures to prevent that by sorbethening the, um, the cylinder head. So let's move on to actually the gear set since we were talking about uh, gear mesh. The uh, SHS motor meshes perfectly with the, uh, the King Arm stock gears. Now these gears are nice and clean. Uh, all the edges have no burrs. Uh, they're, they're, they're nice and, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uniform. And uh, the material looks uh, like solid color all the way through and through. I've seen some gears that come in and they look like they're made of pot metal. But uh, the King Arms has the stamp on there, so they're attaching their name to these. Uh, there's the nice shims. They used a nice set of shims on here. Uh, and they went to the effort of doing that. There's not much wear on this uh, uh, bevel gear because uh, I'm using an aftermarket motor and it tends to mesh perfectly with that. So we'll go ahead and put that aside. Uh, nice anti-reverse latch. The cool part about this anti-reverse latch is that when we were mounting it to replace the gear or put the gear back in, um, unlike certain guns, other companies, it, it, it stays in place. So we go ahead and uh, pop it in there, and that's going to make the lie on me. But it stays in place. So, like when you're putting the, the gearbox shell back together, you're not fighting to keep that in position. It, it stays in there. So we like that. Good job, good job, King Arms. It means working on your gearbox is going to be fun. Um, let's talk about plastic components inside here. Obviously, the switch assembly is plastic. Otherwise, you'd be grounding the gearbox and creating sparks. And although it would look pretty, um, it would look like one of them cheap Buck Rogers guns that you pull. You people don't know what I'm talking about. I'm too old for this. But anyway. Uh, uh, spring guide is nice. It is not a sp uh, bearing spring guide, but it, it's made of plastic, which means that there is the possibility that the plastic one could crack. So, um, this, the cylinder is polycarb. It is not uh, does that not have the second tooth removed. It is full teeth all the way across. It has the one metal tooth on the end. Um, uh, looks like a pretty standard uh, polycarb uh, uh, cylinder head. Sorry, piston head. You guys are going to yell at me for naming these. Ones. This is a polycar piston head. There is no wear so far, so the angle of engagement on this gun is damn near perfect because there's hardly any teeth wear on the first one. There's just a little bit. Um, so I may actually shave off this second one and then because uh, I'm running a higher speed application and go ahead and uh, change the AOE just a little bit on this gun. Um, 
brass cylinder. Oh, I forgot, we're still on polycarbonate stuff. Polycarbonate cylinder head, single O-ring, and it has a little rubber bumper pad, but that's kind of dense. So going to the sorbethene on the back of here uh, will actually improve uh, wear and tear on this gun. It'll also quiet down the, that little slap that it makes. Um, looks like a nylon resin or a resin uh, um, uh, tappet plate. And it looks like all of the components in this gun are the same components that King Arms sells uh, aftermarket for their version 2 gearbox. So these are not just some cheap uh, sport line parts. These are actually the components they sell in their, their higher end series. So uh, thumbs up uh, King Arms on that. Uh, wiring harness, beautiful wiring harness. Nice tight wire that stays in its position. It's got a thick shielding on it, but the wire is... Uh, thin enough with the shielding that it, it, it stays down and meshes perfectly in the gearbox. Uh, this is stuff that's a little tough, so it's it's not easy to nick. So this is good wiring, not like that really flimsy silicone stuff that uh, you get nicks in them all the time. So good job on that. Um, after a couple, you know, say like 50,000 shots or whatever it is through this gun, I may be overestimating it, but it's been tens of thousands, so, um, you know, don't give me shit. But anyway, this, uh, uh, this uh, switch has just minimum amount of scoring on the positive side. The positive side is always the one over where the selector switch is, and that gets a lot more of the blacking than the other side. But we just go in there and clean it off, and this switch is good for you know, tens of thousands of more shots, even on the 11.1 .1 lithium polymer battery I'm running on this gun. So uh, spring, nice material, not bent, not flimsy, looks even throughout. This is a, what is this, Paul? This is a linear spring? It's not a non-linear spring. It doesn't have the... Uh, Right, this is linear. Yep, this is the linear, not the non-linear. And um, this is a linear spring, no big deal. It works great. That's just um, a basic spring. Yeah, but it's nice and machined, it's cleaned, it almost has like a, a, a polished finish to it in black, matte black. It's a nice spring. You know what it's almost like? What's it like? It's almost like ICS spring. It looks like an ICS spring is what Paul says. But um, the, the, I forgot to mention the piston has like the top notch out of here, and I'm guessing the King Arms may be doing this not to make them lighter, but probably this is part of a blowback system on a different gun. So uh, may, I may be wrong. But the gearbox shoot, screws, uh, hex screws, nice machine, shoot, uh, machine uh, screws that are recessed. Uh, these are beautiful. Um, hardly any chance of stripping one of those out when putting it in. It's also a reminder not to over tighten them when you put them on uh, and when you're clamping up your gearbox. But um, all the gears, including uh, the um, sector gear, has the uh, sector delayer. Uh, it has the tappet delayer, so that's kind of an upgrade item. Usually, that item right there is something you buy in aftermarket, and it'll end up costing you know five to fifteen bucks depending on where you get it. So um, it's neat that it has that. Uh, bearings, nice and smooth, clean. Uh, they're seven millimeter. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you gotta go to a nine millimeter. Well, if you worry about uh, bearings burning up or the casings going bad, usually it's this one that goes bad, but there's very little movement in there, so that bearing still got some life. Um, you can just pop these out, put in some stainless seven millimeter bushings. Um, usually I run a bearing down here on the uh, bevel gear, and then up on the uh, spur and the sector gear, I run uh, bushings. So, standard trigger, uh, plastic uh, safety stop, um, uh, it does have an O-ring on the uh, air nozzle, which is a nice feature. It gives you better seal, better compression, and higher FPS. Uh, overall, uh, a lot of positive things to say about this gearbox. The only negative thing I'd have to say is I don't like the fact it doesn't have a quick release for the wire harness for going to the front wire system. And I also don't like the fact that um, there's like a little bit of glue or resin uh, that holds the rubber bumper onto the uh, cylinder head that's coming loose and it's getting inside the um, uh, the cylinder. And that little gritty stuff uh, wears out the um, the O-ring quicker and then you're going to end up with lower FPS over time. So um, overall, fantastic gearbox for what you're paying for. This is like a $200 uh, gun. Uh, internally the gearbox is uh, 
Um, right up there with $350 guns, $400 guns. I like a gun where I can get parts. I'm old school. This is a, this is a traditional old school version 2 gearbox that is uh, well built. And that's more important to me than like fancy dancy new features. But uh, let's move on to the hop-up assembly. Um, a hop-up does have a uh, O-ring. Uh, around it for sealing against the front of the gearbox. I don't know how much actual seal that makes, but it looks like it meshes right in there and does create some seal. That is a nice feature, nice upgrade. Hop up so far for me has been nice. Uh, clean, polished, thick brass barrel. This is thick. I haven't actually seen one this thick since I own my PTW. System of PTW has a really thick brass barrel. This is super thick. I, you probably can't see it, but uh, it's about a millimeter thick round. Um, I can't tell you how tight it is, but performance-wise, um, it's as accurate as some of my Mad Bull 6.03 barrels I've been using. So stock barrel, good. Hop-up drift, nice and tight mechanism on there, so this hop-up does not drift. It's been staying exactly where I set it when I leave it. Um, <clears throat> stock bucking, I've had no problems with it. This gun has been reaching out and touching people. So. Um, out of the box, I'd say this is a, a pretty good uh, stock hop-up. So, I mean, you're paying $200 for a full metal receiver, a really nice shimmed gearbox with some parts that look like pre-upgraded parts. So, if you guys have any questions or comments or you want to see this gun or buy it, uh, we'll have it up on our website, uh, 320airsoft.com, and you can stop in our store, see us, we'll BS, we'll talk about a bunch of stuff, and uh, maybe one day we'll get out in the field and shoot each other. So. Uh, I, I, if I had to give this a, like a, a 10 out of 10 rating or a 10 scale rating or whatever it is, this gun is definitely, uh, what would you say? Would it be fair to say an 8.5? 8.5. I will never give anything a 10 because every airsoft gun breaks, but this is definitely up on the higher end of that scale. A lot of nice components in here. A few that are just kind of... Uh, Short change, but they're not super stress parts, so they may last forever, and there's no need to put a metal one in there. But good gears, um, nice bearings, nice shim job, uh, tap it plate, components like that, wiring harness, really nice, really nice spring. You know, some other things you may want to upgrade, like you might want to put a double seal cylinder head on there. But again, if you get good compression with that, there's no point in changing it out. Uh, I'd like to put a Sorbo on there just to keep this front of this gearbox from. Uh, uh, you know, shattering off. But that's it. Hope you like this review. Um, we talked about the inside. Check out my channel. There's also a review of the outside. And there is a video of us using it out in the game. So um, thanks for watching. Subscribe and comment. I wonder if your fingers get stuck in here like Oh my God. <laughs> Help. That's not funny. I can't get my fingers out. Go get the Dremel tool.